Hey, Hickok 45 here. We're going to do a little comparison today between the Beretta 92 FS and the Glock. Uh, two very, very popular pistols, two very good, high quality pistols, as you probably already know. Very similar guns in a lot of ways. They're both 9mm. They fire the 9mm Parabellum, and uh, they are both high capacity guns. You know, both will hold 15 rounds in a stock magazine, 17 rounds if you want it. You can even get magazines that hold more than that, at least for the Glock, maybe for the Beretta, not sure. Uh, both guns are very reliable. It's been my experience that the Beretta and the Glock just do not malfunction unless there's some uh, bad ammo involved, bad hand loads, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, they both seem very durable. I've uh, not noticed any durability issues, certainly with the Glock, and I have more, less experience with the Beretta, but uh, we all you know, can read all about the breading where we want. Our military uses this gun. This is, of course, the adopted, you know, sidearm of the U.S. military. And uh, I think it uh, has served the military quite well. There were some issues early on uh, with slides maybe coming off, but I'm sure that was even uh, over, you know, uh, exaggerated probably to some extent. If it happens twice, three, four times and somebody gets hurt, then you hear a lot about it, and that, that's understandable. But they corrected that, as I understand, in the FS model. Uh, they uh, have it designed now so that slide cannot come off. So, so by and large, other than it being a larger pistol, it's a, it's a good gun, a really nice gun. One thing I noticed in terms of comparing the two, and we're going to do some comparisons, that's why we're, we're here today with these two guns, is that even though this is a Glock 19, which is not uh, you know, the full-size Glock, which is the Glock 17, you notice the sight radius is uh, essentially the same on these two uh, pistols, and the Glock 19 being compact, the uh, Glock or the uh, Beretta 92FS being a full-size service pistol, one would say. So uh, it has a longer barrel. It's about an inch longer than the Glock 19, and it's probably a little longer than the Glock 17 even, the full-size Glock. So pretty long barrel, and uh, but the sight radius uh, you know, is, uh, I guess, shorter per barrel length, you could say. Uh, so comparison-wise, I'm kind of talking about some things that are similar with these guns. They're both reliable, they're both durable, they both shoot the same cartridge. Uh, no major complaints with either gun. Uh, they have served military and law enforcement well in this country and probably around the world, uh, you know, both guns. Uh, I don't have any major, major criticisms of, of either gun. There are things about both guns I don't necessarily like. Uh, I don't like the hump on the back of the Glock grip. Uh, that's uh, one reason I prefer the subcompacts and the compact Glocks because the hump hits my hand at a different place. So if I were designing a, the Glock grip of the future, I would be taking uh, uh, whatever, some kind of dribble tool or something to that and just taking that totally off. And uh, the uh, grip on the Beretta, it feels really good. It feels better actually to me than a Glock grip. It actually does. Now. The pull of the trigger and some other things, not so much. But the grip feels really good. This fits my hand like a glove. Nice gun, nice gun. So, uh, lots of good things to say really about both pistols, or they would not be so widely used, would they? We will look at some differences between these two guns. First, before we do that, let's just take a couple of shots really quick, just to show you these are not airsoft guns, these are real, okay? I didn't just take the orange tip off of them and bring them out. Uh, the Beretta. I put a couple of targets up here. I'm going to shoot some steel and some uh, paper both. I have a target labeled Glock 19 and the one beneath it's labeled Beretta. And uh, I don't know, maybe one of these guns, the bullets will be all over the paper, even at this fairly close range. We'll see. I just want to shoot something uh, paper while we're doing this. Let's go long range. Let's go to the gong. Huh. So we killed a few animals there, and uh, 
you know, a little steel, a little paper. The gun shoots well. Uh, every time I complain about the trigger, uh, I almost have to eat my words when I actually start shooting it. But I do, I do have to focus a little more with this gun, and I'll talk about some of the reasons why. Glock 19, I'm not going to wear out my Glock 19 today because I have shot it so much. You've seen it shoot. Let's put some on paper first. Killed a few animals with that too. Uh, what can I say? Both guns shoot well. Let's talk about the differences now between these two guns that I have noticed. I'm giving you my shooting impressions here. I didn't go read 14 articles on these guns. I can't tell you how many ounces this gun weighs with a magazine, without a magazine, with bullets, without. I just know this gun is a little heavier than a Glock. It's not a not substantial. It's not uh, incredibly heavy. It's just heavier than the Glock, uh, even the Glock 17. This is a Glock 19. I don't have a Glock 17. I just don't really have a use for it. I just the 7, 19 fits me so well. But it's a little heavier than the Glock. It does have an alloy frame, of course, keeps the weight down. Probably not as much as a, a polymer frame does for the Glock. So weight-wise, they are, and uh, eh, there is a difference. Size-wise, that's where you get into the big difference. The, uh, the grip is really uh, quite large on the uh, Beretta. It feels good to my hand, however. Uh, the slide is very thick. I've put the calipers on that, and uh, it is wider, much wider than the Glock 19 or Glock 40. It's even a little wider than a Glock uh, 45, you know, Glock 20 or a Glock 21. Not a, not a lot, but it is actually thicker than those big Glocks. All right, but it's considerably thicker than the 19 or the 40, which makes it a little more difficult to, to carry, say, in an inside the waistband holster uh, for concealment. Probably not a lot of uh, Americans uh, in states where uh, carry is permitted uh, carry this inside the waistband. Some probably carry it, but not as many inside the waistband in a, in a, a deep concealment holster as, as you would the Glock 19, for example. You know, in a, I've got a Galco Royal Guard inside the waistband holster there, and it rides nicely right there. Whereas this Beretta would be a very large gun you know, to have there. It's not going to fit in that holster, but it's just a big gun. You know, it's just a really big gun. Generally, this gun is carried outside the waistband. It's carried in a uniform holster, law enforcement or military, uh, for the most part. Not exclusively. You've seen a lot of cop shows you know, where they're carrying this in a shoulder holster or, or you know, under their jacket or whatever. But it is a really large gun. That is the big difference between this gun and the Glock. The most noticeable difference to me, and I think to anybody. Uh, so if you're looking for a gun, a, a uh, the whole self-defense gun, you haven't decided yet, you've not been into any uh, situations where you could test them at a rental range, you've never even held a Beretta, uh, try to do that, of course. But you will find this is a large gun. Let's look at the comparison in size here again. You know, so now this is a Glock 19. And, and, and again, in a lot of ways, it's better to compare it with a Glock 19 probably than a Glock uh, 17 if you're looking for a, a handgun. You're looking for a pistol. I think you ought to be looking for a Glock 19 instead of a Glock 17. So I'm going to quit talking about the Glock 17. Uh, the Beretta uh, is bigger. It's heavier. It's just larger in so many ways. Okay, Big old gun, big old thick gun. The general consensus, I think, among most my old shooters, people kind of in the know. Uh, that wouldn't include me, of course, would it? But most people will say that it's an awfully large gun for the caliber. For a 9mm, it is a very big gun. You know, this, this is, you know, ought to be a 45 ACP or something. Okay, big old gun. Big old gun. That's one of the biggest differences. Uh, the barrel. Uh, uh, one difference is that, it, of course, it's longer, and it also has a traditional rifling, so you can shoot... Uh, uh, cast bullets in that, you know, as far as I know. I, it's got the traditional rifling. It's not, you know, the Glock does have the unusual rifling where you're not supposed to shoot cast bullets in it, lead bullets. But you could do that. Not many people do that with a 9mm, but just, just as a, a point of reference there. 
in terms of field stripping, they both field strip you know, very simply. You've seen me field strip the Glock. You know, you just pop it down, it's apart. Barrel, spring, recoil spring, frame, you know, it's all broken apart. Same way with this. The difference on this gun is you have a lever uh, to take it off. Let's double check it again. Is you, you uh, just push the button on the other side over there and it releases that and then the slide comes right off. Then you have essentially the same situation you do with the Glock. It just uh, comes right off and you have you know, everything apart. So barrel and spring come out and you're ready to go. So there's essentially no difference there. I'm probably a little quicker to take the Glock apart and put it back together in terms of field stripping just because I've done it so much. Uh, but I think if I practice there just, you know, did that more often, it would, uh, you know, not be a lot of difference there either, to tell you the truth. One of the big differences, of course, is the safety uh, on a Glock. You don't have a thumb safety. Of course, you have the trigger uh, and you have the safe action. And, of course, your main safety is between your ears. You know, you don't put your finger on the trigger unless you're ready to fire. You keep a straight finger and uh, you just are aware that thing is a rattlesnake when there's a round in the chamber, as with any gun. You know, so you just have to have an enormous amount of respect for any gun once it's loaded. With a Beretta, you, uh, you do have a thumb safety. Okay, that acts as a hammer drop. Let's check it, it's unloaded. Uh, if I wanna drop the hammer, even on a live round, it doesn't fire, it just drops the hammer, there's a hammer block. So you do have to disengage that safety to fire it. If I pull that trigger, with that down, see nothing happens. All right, push it up, it's ready to go. First fire, first uh, shot is double action. If I haven't cocked it yet, the first shot's gonna be double action. And of course, the slide's gonna come back, pick up another round, it's gonna cock the gun. The second shot is gonna be a shorter trigger pull, single action. And that's one of my criticisms of it. It's, it's one of the reasons I traded off the other one I had. It's a little bit harder to shoot in, in a lot of ways, uh, particularly in competition. Back when I was competing a fair amount, I found the Glock trigger much better because I didn't want that double action to single action. You pull it out and uh, your first, if, and, and uh, as I recall, the rule was if you have a safety on the gun, it has to be engaged, which makes sense. So you, you've got the, the gun on safe, you pull out of the holster for the first shot and uh, it disengage it. And then you got a double action pull and then the next pull is a lot shorter. So you have two different trigger pulls from first to second shot. So that was one reason that uh, it, it didn't uh, get me very excited back then. But uh, it is a neat gun. It is uh, you know, our military sidearm and it, it shoots well. You know, I, I can bad mouth it all I want, but actually in terms of just shooting it there, it looks like even on the paper, and of course this isn't very scientific, I'm just out here fooling around and, and plinking, but it looked like I shot it about as well and even across the hill. You know, not a lot of difference that I could tell. I might look at the video and, and see a difference, but uh, I wasn't really going for a, a great marksmanship feat here or anything. They both shoot well, both are good guns. Uh, there are differences. Uh, you do, of course, also, one of the other differences, you have a regular hammer, you know, and firing pin configuration more or less on the, the Beretta. You got an internal striker on the, on the Glock. Uh, both good guns. I, uh, I would recommend both. If the size on the Beretta doesn't bother you and uh, it feels good uh, and it, it meets your, your purpose, nothing wrong with it. It, it, it does just fine. Uh, let me take a couple more shots real quick, but let's not put a Glock magazine in it. I don't think that would work too well. There's my, there's my Beretta target. Shoot the Glock once more. Both are nice guns. Uh, one's a little bigger for a nine millimeter, but uh, you're in good shape with either one of those. My choice of these two guns would be, surprise, surprise, the Glock. But I do like the Brother too. There's something kind of special about it. I'm not sure what it is, but it, it's just kind of an interesting gun. Uh, I would choose this one, but uh, 
that one's not so bad either. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, demonstration, that little comparison. Hopefully it was of some help to you, and uh, I'll be seeing you all later.